Thank you so much. Thank you. First of all, I, I want to introduce myself. I'm Audrey Scott, and um, I, along with some wonderful people, my committee, we have um, initiated this first annual Chesapeake Charities Award Ceremony and hope to make it a first annual. And we thank you so much, each and every one of you, for being here today to help us kick off this wonderful, wonderful event. Welcome and thank you all for attending our very first celebration of charity to recognize those who exemplify the qualities of leadership, community service, and altruism. On behalf of the Board of Directors of Chesapeake Charities, I would like to thank our generous sponsors for their support. Our event sponsor is the Maryland University of Maryland Medical Center, the system and the University of Maryland Shore Regional Health. And they're sitting here and we are very grateful to you. <clears throat> Our premier sponsors are the Chesapeake Bay Beach Club, John Wilson and Bob Pascal. Thank you, John. I want to encourage all of you to come here as often as possible. He now has the new Noxie restaurant and the inn, and they're both just tremendous additions to our community. Our platinum sponsors are the College of Southern Maryland, the Nabbit Foundation, Ride Entertainment, and WHBG Certified Public Accountants. Thank you all. And our gold sponsors, Bay Area Association of Realtors, Bell Nursery and Gary Mangum, the Clifton Foundation, Eastern Shore Dental Care, Jiffy Lube, and Tri Gas and Oil Company. Thank you to all of our sponsors. There are additional sponsors listed in the program, and I would direct your attention to those to also recognize them and thank them is a situation where you just can't believe it could happen, but we have so many supporters and so many sponsors that to name everyone, we would have to extend our time here, and I don't think we are allowed to do that. So I want to also thank the members of my event committee who did an outstanding job. Kathy Diotis, Jody Gray, Sonia Mangum, Dick Saucy, Mark Stemmen, and Paula Warner. I hope you all are as pleased as I am with the success and the results of your hard work. Thank you, committee. <clears throat> and for those of you who don't know too much about Chesapeake Charities, let me give you a very brief explanation of what we do. We make charity happen. Chesapeake Charities is a community foundation. It is our mission to connect people, resources, and donors to address local needs. We are experts in philanthropy and provide financial, legal, and administrative support to more than 75 charitable organizations, 501c3s in this area. And all of this good work is done with less than 4% overhead and administrative costs. Less That's mainly because we have a group of phenomenal, tremendous volunteers. So that the money that you donate goes directly to spend on direct services. In our leadership role, we bring together donors, nonprofits, business and government agencies to address community needs. And we are very thrilled and we're pleased that you're here to join us in that effort today. Today we're celebrating what is good and noble in our society. For the next hour, you will learn about people who live their lives with grace and dignity, individuals who make personal sacrifices to create a better world for children. Excuse me, my lines. Who do do? That's it. Excuse me, for children and people of need in our community. It brings me great joy at this time to kick off the event and to introduce our very first sponsor. Rick Lerner, former chairman and CEO of Bank America, 
Bank Annapolis. <laughs> just, was that a promotion or a demotion? I, I, don't, I don't know which. <laughs> Served as chairman of the Board of Chesapeake Charities from 2006 to 2014. It was his leadership that enabled this organization to become what it is today, a vital center of knowledge for donors, for nonprofits, businesses, and government agencies in the Chesapeake Bay region. Please help me in welcoming Rick to the podium. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for that very warm introduction, Audrey. I'm very happy to be here today on the occasion of the first celebration of charity, something that was in the planning phase when I left the Chesapeake Charities Board in 2014. Having served as chairman of this organization during its early years, it's very gratifying to see how it has flourished. I commend the board and staff for organizing such a wonderful event to recognize those who demonstrate the highest values of community service and leadership. And I thank you all for coming out today to support an organization that is truly near and dear to my heart, one that enables so much good charitable work to be done in this community. It's my privilege to introduce today's first honoree, Governor Larry Hogan and share some personal reflections on a man I've known for over a decade, first as his banker, then as a business partner, and I'm proud to say as one of his earliest supporters in his run for governor. This is a story of an underdog and a fighter, a man who defies the odds and comes out a winner, someone whose actions match his promises, a person of optimism and good cheer, integrity, and courage in the face of adversity. When I met Larry Hogan, he was serving as appointment secretary in Governor Ehrlich's cabinet. He later returned to the private sector to run the Hogan Companies, a successful real estate services firm in Annapolis that he founded. As an entrepreneur, Larry experienced firsthand how difficult it was becoming in Maryland for small business owners to succeed. Larry was never a career politician, but as a businessman and a concerned citizen growing ever more frustrated with the status quo in Annapolis, Larry set out to make a difference and form Change Maryland in 2011, the largest grassroots organization in state history. Change Maryland tapped into the deep-seated frustration of citizens no longer able to afford to live and work in the state they loved. The success of that movement propelled Larry to run for the state's highest office in 2014. Upon taking office, Governor Hogan rallied Democrat and Republican leaders to adopt a sound budget. <coughs> He cut tolls at every single toll facility across the state for the first time in 50 years. He reduced or eliminated 255 different fees, prevented 100 job-killing regulations from taking effect, repealed the rain tax mandate, cut taxes for retirees, and return more than $200 million in refund checks to overtaxed citizens. In total, Governor Hogan has provided Marylanders nearly $700 million in tax, toll, and fee relief. His first year in office was the most successful in total job creation during the last eight years, and the most successful year for private job growth in the past 15 years. Since January 2015, Maryland has created more than 74,000 jobs. Can you imagine if our national leaders followed Governor Hogan's example? <laughs> These impressive accomplishments speak to Governor Hogan's leadership skills and willingness to cross the aisle to make things happen. Unlike so many others in politics today, he is truly a leader who prioritizes good governance and what's best for Maryland over political partisanship. He brings people together, something that I've seen him do many times, and in doing so has earned the trust and respect of people in every corner of the state. But there is so much more to this man that is worthy of our admiration and praise. We measure our leaders by how they perform when tested. Just 90 days after he became governor, Baltimore was overwhelmed with the worst violence the city had experienced in 47 years. Governor Hogan acted swiftly and decisively to restore order. 
Then two months later, without symptoms or warning, Governor Hogan received the devastating news that he had an advanced and aggressive form of cancer. In that moment, Larry Hogan's life changed abruptly. His focus went from turning our economy around and putting people back to work, to listening to doctors describe how non-Hodgkin's lymphoma has spread throughout his body. He responded to this unexpected challenge with courage, faith, and determination. Guided by an internal compass that never wavered, Governor Hogan chose to wage his battle with cancer in the public eye so that he could raise awareness for all those stricken with the disease. Surrounded by his loving family, he went public with the news just days after receiving the diagnosis. Throughout the ordeal of his illness, he remained upbeat and focused on surviving the disease and helping others. He became a prominent advocate for cancer awareness and research, documenting his experience on Facebook, wearing a green, a green lymphoma awareness bracelet, and spending considerable time with cancer-stricken children and their parents. It's his love and empathy for the children waging their battles with this terrible disease that is really so heartwarming. He praises them for their courage. He listens to their fears. He inspires them with hope because he understands the indescribable pain and anxiety that cancer causes. He's able to reassure them that they're not alone. In those first few trying months of Governor Hogan's term, the people of Maryland quickly learned everything they needed to know about the strength and character of their remarkable governor. That he's a man of incredible grace and fortitude and one who's up to any challenge, no matter how difficult or overwhelming the odds. And since that time, I'm happy to say that the disease of cancer also learned a lesson, that it picked a fight with the wrong guy. <laughs> Thank Governor Hogan for sharing this most personal experience with us. He became a champion and an inspiration for the more than 70,000 people diagnosed with lymphoma every year. And for the children battling cancer, Governor Hogan became a symbol of hope that cancer can be beaten. For his courage, leadership, and generous heart, Chesapeake Charities is pleased to honor Governor Larry Hogan at its first annual celebration of charity. First. Before I ask you to come up and accept your award, Governor, I'd like to call up Chesapeake Charities Executive Director Linda Kohler to say a few words. I'm on this mic. Thank you very much. We have an award for you, Governor, that Rick has in his hands, but because of your commitment to raise awareness and support for cancer research, Chesapeake Charities has established the Governor Larry Hogan Scholarship that will be awarded to a promising student pursuing a degree in the field of medical research. The award will be administered by Cancer Comfort Angels, a group of dedicated volunteers in, in Queen Anne's County, and will work with the University of Maryland Medical System to find just the right students to give the award to. Please join us. Wow. That, uh, I get a lot of introductions, but I got to tell you, uh, that was an incredible introduction. Rick Lerner, thank you so much for those kind words. I don't believe half of what he said, <laughs> but it sounded really, really nice. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's, it's great to be here with all of you. Uh, very pleased to have my much better half, my beautiful wife, Yumi, with us. Isn't she doing a great job as First Lady? And I'm also a little bit surprised, but very pleased to have with me the real Larry Hogan, um, my dad, who I have so much respect for, former county executive, former congressman Larry Hogan Sr., and his wife, Alona. <laughs> Rick uh, was telling the truth. Uh, he and I have been friends for a long time. He was a banker when no one else would lend me money. And then he became a business partner when no one else wanted to be my partner. And then when I decided to run for Congress and no one else wanted to contribute, he was one of the first guys to step up. And then today he just uh, honored me with that very uh, nice introduction. I think I should take Rick everywhere I go. Maybe you could say that and introduce me somewhere else later this afternoon. That'd be great. Uh, Audrey Scott, 
uh, thank you so much for all your incredible many years of uh, everything you've done in the community and all across Maryland. You've been a great friend, and I want to thank you for inviting me today, and thank you for all your great work, work with Chesapeake Charities. I want to give a shout out to my friend Diana Waterman, who has done an incredible job as the uh, chairman of the Maryland Republican Party, and she's just gone through her own tough battle with cancer, and she's looking fantastic. She looks beautiful with her hair, curly head, she's feeling strong. It really is uh, such an incredible honor to be included among these great award winners. Um, you know, they truly are the ones uh, who deserve the recognition today rather than me. Uh, but I'm happy to be here with them and proud of them. And Marianne Hams, uh, Kim Umberger, uh, and partnering with youth, and my very good friend, uh, Amelia Foxwell, who's your volunteer of the year. Where's, where is everybody? I want you all to stand up. And <laughs> And then there's uh, one more man that I, uh, whom I get to talk about in just a few moments, um, and uh, I'm not going to say anything about him quite yet. Uh, but I want to express my appreciation to Chesapeake Charities um, and, and for all of the incredible work that they do. And I want to sincerely thank the sponsors and um, each and every one of you for being here today and supporting such a wonderful organization. Uh, for me, it's an incredible honor to receive this award, but particularly uh, the establishment of a scholarship in my name uh, for students who have chosen to devote their lives to finding a cure for cancer is incredibly humbling and very much appreciated. The timing of this celebration today uh, is kind of special for me because yesterday uh, marked my one year anniversary of being 100% cancer free and in complete remission. And as Rick mentioned, uh, you know, I, uh, I'd only been governor, I'd just been sworn in 150 days before this, and uh, I went from being focused on turning our economy around and, and helping to put people back to work. We were off to a great start with our new administration, uh, and I went from focusing on those important things that were part of the plan uh, to uh, uh, hearing doctors that I just met for the first time uh, tell me that I had a very advanced and aggressive cancer that had spread all throughout my body. Um, well, it, uh, just a few weeks ago, I completed my 18 months of chemotherapy. And uh, during the first five months of my, following my diagnosis, I went through uh, aggressive 24-hour chemotherapy, uh, a couple of surgeries, and spinal taps, and scans, and countless other procedures. Uh, and I can't tell you it was a lot of fun. Uh, but my story is just one of the nearly 30,000 Maryland cancer stories each year. And uh, the reality is that cancer is a disease that has touched probably nearly every one of us in this room uh, through family, uh, friends, or loved ones. Cancer does not discriminate. It doesn't care if you're white or black or young or old certainly doesn't care if you have millions of people counting on you and you've got a state to run. Um, but over the course of my own treatment, I met so many amazing fellow patients and their families who were fighting much tougher battles than my own. And it was their optimism and courage and positive energy that was my inspiration. And it's because of them that as long as I am governor of this great state, and long after that, I will remain 100% committed to uh, raising money and raising awareness and encouraging research that will one day lead to a cure for these terrible diseases. Since taking office, our administration has committed nearly $85 million towards cancer research care and initiatives, which is an increase of more than 16%. We're making great strides in the fight against cancer, and I'm proud of all the amazing work that's being done. But there is still so much more left to be done. And this scholarship today is just another step in helping to support those important efforts. 
You know, when you battle a life-threatening illness like cancer, it really does have a way of uh, putting things in perspective. And I can tell you that not a day goes by when I don't think about the patients I met and their families, and I don't forget about the incredible team of dedicated healthcare providers at the University of Maryland Greenbaum Cancer Center, who are our sponsors and sitting right here in the middle of the room. I'd like that whole table to stand up and give them a big round of applause if we could. <laughs> One of those amazing doctors who literally led the team that saved my life is here today, and he most certainly deserves this special recognition. He's one of the kindest, most caring, most humble, and quite frankly, most amazing individuals that I've ever had the pleasure of knowing in my entire life. Dr. Aaron Rappaport exemplifies the medical profession's highest values, commitment to service, leadership, and dedication to patient care. He's devoted his entire life to saving patients and to finding cures for cancer, and his work is literally transforming cancer treatment and improving the prognosis for those with these life-threatening diseases. Trained at MIT and Harvard University, I guess maybe he couldn't get into the University of Maryland. <laughs> Pretty good schools, nonetheless. <laughs> Dr. Rappaport is a board-certified hematologist and stem cell transplant physician, an acclaimed researcher and a distinguished professor. He's received many awards for his outstanding contributions to the advancement of blood cancer research. And today, it is my honor and my distinct pleasure and privilege to present Dr. Aaron Rappaport with the Excellence in Patient Care Award for his outstanding commitment to combining an unwavering commitment to scientific research along with incredible warmth, care, and compassion for his patients. So at this time, please join me in congratulating my doctor and my very good friend, Dr. Aaron Rappaport. Thank you, thank you, Governor, for those uh, very, very excessively uh, praiseworthy words. Uh, I, uh, I asked the Governor if he'd give me a few minutes to, to, for rebuttal, and so uh, that's what I'd, what I'd like to do. Actually, what I would just like to do is, is uh, offer four thank yous. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Audrey Scott and, and her wonderful team, I, too many volunteers and people to name and uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting many of you and, and just uh, it's a wonderful work and wonderful organization there's su such selfless dedication to helping people in need and it's uh, just a great privilege to, to be here and to be at this beautiful event this beautiful venue and I thank you so much for including us um, including me in that um, my second thank you is to uh, to Governor Hogan and his family um, for their warmth and friendship and really for the great privilege and opportunity uh, and pleasure uh, because there's no better, no better patient, I can assure you, in terms of uh, courage and determination and, and strength and passion and example uh, for giving us the opportunity at the University of Maryland under uh, Bob Krenzig and, and Dr. Cullen, uh, the great privilege and opportunity to 
help with his care. And uh, um, we're very blessed by wonderful, outstanding teams of nurses and, and nurse practitioners and, and support staff and research staff and at every, every level of the, of the organization, the hospital. And it, it's, I, I'm so privileged and to work with so many, so many people uh, in that organization. And, um, and I also just want to add to what uh, uh, Rick and uh, Lerner and the governor talked about is with the governor's uh, amazing uh, generosity uh, in, in being able to uh, essentially be so open about his, his experience, his care, his um, emotional ups and downs. It provided such a uh, inspiration, uh, continuing inspiration to so many Marylanders who've had to go through similar treatment. And I can, having, uh, having walked with him through uh, the wards at the hospital and even walked through children's wards in Israel where he, he and his staff gave out gifts uh, to children who are going through cancer treatment at Hadassah Hospital, uh, both Arabs and Jews, they're all together. And as the governor said, cancer doesn't discriminate. Um, he's, he's been an enormous uh, inspiration um, and role model and source of strength. Um, and, and he should continue to, to do that. Uh, my, my third thanks uh, goes to um, my wife, Debbie, uh, who's here with us, and my parents, the Morton Rosalie Rappaport, for being wonderful supports and role models. Um, and uh, so cherish your love and support, and thank you for being here. And a fourth uh, thank you is to, to God, the one above, who, uh, whose blessings we all uh, seek and, and, uh, and are grateful for, and I, um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that he's given me to um, help care for people over a number of years. And, um, and I hope and pray that he will continue to uh, bless the governor with, with health, with strength, with wisdom, to continue to do the wonderful things he does for so many people. And, uh, and you know, it's... Uh, uh, he just has such a, a caring spirit. He just cares about so many people. I'll just tell you one brief vignette. We were happened. We were in Israel together. Uh, a young man came up uh, and said, uh, "Governor, I wanted to show you this uh, new uh, cell phone that we've invented that uh, enables people who don't have uh, use of their hands, if they're injury or, or or disease." that they can't operate a, a mobile phone. So th this, uh, I think, uses uh, eye movements to help control the cell phone. And you could, you could just see the governors get so excited about this invention, something that could help you know, some, some additional people. And he had the staff come over, meet this guy, see what we can do to help him to develop this. And you just see that, uh, just see that over and over again with, with Governor Hogan. And may, uh, may he continue to be blessed with the the, the strength and the courage and the wisdom and the health to, to continue to do those things for people uh, near and far. Um, and, uh, and, and well, I, I, um, um, I thank you all again and for, for the privilege and pleasure of being here, and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rappaport, and we are grateful and very pleased that you were able to bring Debbie and your parents. Um, proud day for you, and uh, you've done a good job. You've done a good job. As this is our inaugural celebration of charity, it was important that we honor people of the highest caliber when I learned that Mary Ann Harms had been nominated to receive the Philanthropist of the Year Award, I could not have been happier. Mary Ann is a woman of tremendous grace and kindness who is well known for giving back to her community. She has volunteered her time and talent to countless organizations within Calvert County and has made an impact 
that will last forever. I first met Mary Ann when we served together on the board of Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum in Calvert County. I thought of her then as a steel magnolia, elegant in her approach, always gracious, but determined to achieve the desired outcome. At that time, we were considering and had undertaken a project to build an authentic Indian village on the banks of the Patuxent. And one of the things that we needed most in order to build the Hogan's, yes, Larry, they're called Hogan's, um, <laughs> Indian huts, was the bark of special trees. And the trees that provided the best bark for these Hogan's were tulip poplars. And so we sat around and said, I think we're stymied. I don't know if we're going to be able to accomplish this project or not. Where in the world are we going to get bark for Hogan's uh, from tulip poplar trees? And so um, Mary Ann was listening and without a word disappeared. Within a few days, several trucks pulled up full of tulip poplar bark. <laughs> and um, it was like a no-brainer for her. She went on her own property and had several, many of the trees stripped of their bark so we could build these Hogan's in the Indian village. And they remain today as a very, very popular and educational uh, testimony to her determination. The daughter of a military pilot, Mary Ann witnessed the extreme poverty of North Africa when her family was stationed on a remote base in Tripoli, Libya. She never forgot that experience and it shaped her views on philanthropy. Mary Ann helps those in need not out of obligation, but out of a sense of gratitude for having been born in a country as magnificent as the USA. With a background in private business and television production, she had her own TV show for many years. She has applied her unique skill set to advocate for the causes that touch her heart. Education, health care, children and family services, drug addiction, prevention, historic preservation, and gardening and landscape design. Since moving to Calvert County in 1987, Mary Ann has been an unstoppable force for good. She has designed gardens, restored parks, refurbished museums, and served on countless boards and committees. Organizations benefiting from her time and talent include the College of Southern Maryland, Calvert Memorial Hospital, the Calvert Marine Museum, all of which have representatives here today, and we thank you for your support of Mary Ann. She has also been an advocate for the Calvert County Nursing Center, the Asbury Solomons Calvert Alliance Against Substance Abuse, Jefferson Par Patterson Park and Museum, the Calvert Garden Club, and the Anne Marie Sculpture Gardens. She even assisted the Calvert Community Foundation a strategic partner of our Chesapeake Charities with seed money to get their foundation up and operational. Combining her talents for landscape design and gardening, she and her husband John built the Harms Healing Garden at the Calvert Memorial Hospital. Situated in a quiet corner outside the emergency room, the garden provides a refuge where patients and their family members can find tranquility and peace. She followed that gift with something even more impressive, a donation to the Sheldon E. Goldberg Breast Cancer Center that established the Mary Ann Harms Women's Care Suite. The multidisciplinary center provides state-of-the-art breast care for women from around the region. Her donation expanded the capacity of the center, making it possible to add additional exam rooms, enlarge the library, and improve access for the entire community. But it is her most recent gift of a million dollars to the College of Southern Maryland that speaks to her savvy business skills. This perpetual scholarship will provide students who might not otherwise have the ability to attend college with an opportunity to develop the skills they need to get and to keep a job. When asked why, why she gives back to her community so abundantly. She replied, every time you do something nice, it inspires someone else to do something nice. 
Even the smallest gesture inspires others to do the same. Her advice for those just getting started, just join in something that interests you. Give it a few hours. Give a few hours of your time to start. Mary Ann, we applaud the way you've chosen to live your life. Your impact is immediate and everlasting. Please help me in welcoming and honoring Mary Ann Harms for her incredible generosity of spirit and a lifetime of giving. Well, this is such a lovely day, and certainly following Governor Hogan and Dr. Rappaport. Cannot match you, sir, but I will try. Um, I think all of you here in this room are very involved in charities. I'm usually out there talking, encouraging people to donate money, but I think I'm preaching to the choir with this wonderful audience. Uh, I'm just a woman that started out with your children at home and ended up being a Girl Scout leader. My son's here. He remembers me doing PTA dinners and making the worst coffee in the world for those poor people that came. But slowly, as the years go by, and there have been many, many years, I must admit, um, you take on larger projects. You learn you can motivate people or you can put together projects and you move on to larger and larger things. And as years go by, um, suddenly it seems like some of those projects have come to fruition and you have made a difference and you can look back with pride. And I think most of us here realize that we are incredibly blessed. Uh, my husband and I were very conservative business people, always tried to do things in a modest way, but what we came to realize at the, toward the ends of our lives was that we were blessed because whatever that intangible thing is that lets you become a success, be it the hand of God or luck, when you realize you've made it, your families are grown, your children are taken care of, that if you have something left, it's your responsibility to give back, that you have been blessed. And so, um, thank you so much for this award, but it, it certainly, we always felt it was our duty to give back if we could, and we know that uh, we, you know, we're, we're not worried about the truck payment or the house mortgage anymore, and we haven't moved to Florida, so being able to give, no offense to anybody else. <laughs> I see all those beautiful boats out there, and I think there are probably people here who have just wonderful, wonderful lives. I still live on our home place in Calvert County, uh, but we decided that education was the thing that we wanted to target. So the gift to the College of Southern Maryland, we thought was the best way as business people to maximize our gift, because what we see is by being able to fund education, for young people and even middle-aged people going back to college in our community, we don't have the luxury of the beautiful University of Maryland, which we treasure so much. We have wonderful community colleges in our tri-county area, and we thought if we could get people in the first year of college, or the second year, if we could get them in a trade school so they could learn to drive a truck, or be an electrician, or be a carpenter, that those were going to be productive people. And so that's our small way of giving back. We hope those are the footsteps. I look around this room here, and I'm sure that there are people here who have done so, so much more. And I personally am very inspired by what I've heard today. I wasn't that familiar with Chesapeake Charities, but what I've learned is that it's just an extraordinary organization that allows small nonprofits to do their work in their own communities. So thank you so much for the lovely gift of being able to be here on the very first event like this. And I certainly wish you many, many more wonderful days like this. Go forward and continue all this wonderful work. We're gonna change the world. <laughs> it's now my privilege 
to present the award for the Nonprofit of the Year. The Partnering for Youth After School Program, or PFY as the children call it, is a model of what every after school program should be. It's based on research and utilizes a combination of best practices to provide the highest quality after school programs for school aged youth. And here's what the research says. Model programs should be based in the schools. PFY is. They should establish partnerships with community-based organizations and school personnel. PFY does. And they should offer a range of activities to participants that include academics, enrichment activities, sports, and, and recreation. And do they ever. The program opens each day with a 15-minute character lesson called Let's Talk. A caring adult, most often the site coordinator, who's waiting in the cafeteria with a healthy snack and juice or water for the children, offers students a meaningful topic or character lesson to consider. They might talk about the importance of being a good friend, or the value of one's reputation, or what it feels like to be bullied. If these seem like things that you or your family discussed over the dinner table when you were growing up, then you have a good understanding of what Partnering for Youth means to the children who participate. It's family. It's a safe place to grow and learn, and boy is it fun. The Partnering for Youth staff know how to hide learning in something that kids want to do. They carefully craft lesson plans that embed science, technology, art, engineering, and math in sports, in physical and team challenges, and in service learning projects. One day, you might build an ozobot out of toothbrushes and program it to perform simple tasks. The next day, you're in cooking class, learning the benefits of a heart-healthy diet. You can choose astronomy and explore the Earth, the moon, and the stars. Or maybe you just want to dance. There's something for everyone. And students have a say in the program offerings, as PFY routinely surveys them to find out what activities they want in their after-school program. In some of our schools, there's rigorous academic support to help those most in need. These programs assist children reading below grade level or struggling to attain basic skills in mathematics. The PFY vision is to ensure that all school-aged children in Queen Anne's County have access to high-quality, affordable, and educational after-school opportunities. It's a lofty goal, and one that requires enormous commitment of the staff. You see, PFY isn't funded by the Board of Education or through county tax dollars alone. The majority of funding for the PFY program comes from grants secured from sources outside of Queen Anne's County. To understand what this really means, imagine if all the educators had to compete for the funding to sustain their program while they were teaching children in the classroom. It seems an unthinkable challenge but one that PFY has been able to achieve for the past 21 years. Since 2002, PFY has received grant awards totaling over $11 million from federal, state, and private sources. The program charges an $80 participation fee to all who can afford it. No student is turned away from the program due to their inability to pay. The Queen Anne's County Commissioners provide $100,000 each year, and the Board of Education provides tremendous in-kind contributions in the form of facilities and personnel. Other partners, including the Governor's Office for Children, the Clifton Foundation, and the United Way, also contribute. Last school year, 1,124 children in grades 1 through 8 participated in the PFY program in 10 of our schools. The program is assessed for quality and evaluated for f effectiveness each year, and the results are clear. PFY participants attend school more often. They achieve better grades in school than the non-participants. Students come to the program eager and ready to learn. When we impose academic requirements on the children who want to participate in the team sports like basketball, they work harder during the school day so they can participate after school. And parents are grateful that their children have a safe and supportive place to be during the critical hours between 3 and 5 when juvenile delinquency rates are at their highest. But most of all, important relationships are formed between children and their teachers, between community members and the schools, 
and between students who excel academically and those who struggle in school. Everyone wins when the student's success is the goal. For their dedication to children and families in Queen Anne's County, and for the outright joy they infuse in learning, we recognize the Partnering for Youth After School Program as the nonprofit of the year. On behalf of the PFY staff and the Board of Education, we'd like to present this award to Kimberly Umberger, PFY's Program Director, who's led the PFY team for the past 16 years. And I'd like the entire PFY staff, who's here today, to stand up and be recognized. I'm very proud to work for this organization and with these people that are standing behind me and about 130 other staff members um, that couldn't be here today. Um, we are endearingly called PFY by the children in our program. Sometimes I don't think they know exactly what that means, that it means partnering for youth. Um, PFY exemplifies the opportunities that Perseverance provides. We wish to thank those who support after-school programs with their voices, contributions, and participation. Together, we all make it a great place to be after school. On behalf of the Partnering for Youth After School Program, Queen Anne's County um, Public Schools, the Maryland State Department of Education, Chesapeake Charities, the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, the Local Management Board, the Clifton Foundation, the United Way of Queen Anne's County, our partners, the uh, participating families and youth, and the PFY staff. We accept this prestigious award, and we pledge to continue to realize our vision to ensure that all children in Queen Anne's County have access to high quality, affordable, and educational after school opportunities. Thank you, Chesapeake Charities. Thank you, ladies. Our next presenter is a local businessman and strong supporter of the governor. Gary Mangum is the CEO and president of Bell Nursery and the donor of the beautiful flowers that you see here today. You can find these lovely poinsettias and the orchids at your local Home Depot store. Without further ado, let me call Gary up. <laughs> All right, I didn't write the part about Home Depot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you, Linda. Uh, let me first, um, well, first of all, I got to say that the folks that um, were here that were the recipients of these honors, what inspirational words. I mean, I, just so much for us all to reflect on uh, with what we've heard today. Um, let me first thank our friend Governor Hogan for his leadership and courage. Our state is so much better off now that you're in charge. I also want to thank First Lady Yumi Hogan for everything that you've done for the state in these two years, and especially for your focus on the children as you get around. And, and you know, we see what you do with the kids. It's just amazing. And thank you so much for your, for your work for the state. Um, and I also want to thank you for the work that you did through Governor Hogan's uh, treatment. It was just amazing to, to watch you by his side and, and see the support that you provided him. And I know we're all better off as a result of that, that effort on your, on your part. And Dr. Rappaport, thank you and your amazing team uh, and, and for saving our governor's life and, and for your life of, of incredibly dedicated and de devoted service. It's a really special thing. I also want to congratulate Marianne Harms and the staff of Partnering for Youth After School Program. Again, two two things that Sonia and I didn't really have awareness of that we'll leave here today thinking a lot more about and, and, and Ms. Harms, you know, your, your, your words were very, very inspiring um, to people in this community. It's my honor right now to introduce the final award recipient of the day, a woman that I care and respect, care for and respect deeply. Amelia Foxwell is the most generous, most consistent giver <coughs> of her own time and talents that I've ever met. Uh, for Amelia, volunteering is not something she does now and again. It's part of her very essence. 
To understand what makes Amelia Foxwell special, you need to look back to her childhood. She learned to help others by watching her parents sacrifice everything they had to help those in need. Amelia's grandfather, her father, her aunt and uncle were ministers for the deaf in Baltimore. She grew up working at the mission along with her parents who traveled into the city from the Eastern Shore each day. Inspired to make a difference before she knew it, Amelia learned sign language so she could communicate with residents of the Foxwell Building, an apartment complex for the deaf. This was at the same time she was learning her early verbal communication. When her grandfather was murdered, Amelia's father had a plaque engraved and placed on the Foxwell Building in his memory. <clears throat> it's a quote from the Bible that best describes how Amelia lives today. It simply says, I must be about my father's work. Her dad is here with us today. He came up from Florida to be here. Thank you. Amelia. <clears throat> Amelia is a real doer. She plans, she executes, and she gets things done. Working quietly behind the scenes, she avoids the spotlight and downplays the importance of her involvement in any task. Amelia has a way of helping people in need without judgment or pity, only compassion. She offers lessons to recipients of her efforts that a compassionate conservative might offer. She teaches as she goes. Because of her warmth and genuine concern, the people Amelia helps often become her close friends. It's no surprise that Amelia received five separate nominations for this award. <clears throat> she has a very positive impact on the people whose lives she touches. From observing her over the years, it's clear that Amelia has always believed it was her responsibility to help those in need. I've heard her say before, I had to help, I looked behind me, and there just wasn't anybody waiting to do it. Amelia's background in psychology and ABA therapy gave her the opportunity to work with survivors of trauma and violence. The experience deepened her commitment to help people find a place of security where they can thrive in our society. Amelia has volunteered for countless charities and organized fundraisers for everything from cancer to the Fireman's Benevolent Fund. She even ran the Dublin Marathon for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. She also helped behind the scenes when candidate Hogan was running for office and has since been an active supporter of many of the events organized by the Governor's Office of Community Initiatives. And of course, Amelia is a volunteer recruiter extraordinaire. My wife, Sonia, and I have been enlisted to help on many of the volunteer projects that, that, that Amelia has started. Whether it's a winter coat drive that, that eventually delivered nearly 2,000 coats into the hands of residents in West Baltimore, or a project to improve community centers for youth in Baltimore City, we try to follow her lead and her example, and try to involve as many others as possible. Amelia's preparation and hard work give us comfort that the project will be well organized and will be successful. In turn, she's the person that we will re re reach out to when we need help organizing virtually anything. Whether it's a duck hunt for veterans, a party for combat wounded, shooting on the range, or a boat ride for inner city children to a farm here on the Eastern Shore, when some people might privately question what's in it for me, Amelia quickly asks, what can I do to help? Today, Amelia is inspired by the children of the McCardle Center for Early Autism Intervention. <clears throat> Building a school from the ground up is a monumental task. When you, when you shorten the timeline to eight months or seven months, it's really a monumental task. For Amelia, it's been a labor of love. With great enthusiasm and little sleep, she's helped to secure the school's license, the school's building, the school's license, design the therapeutic approach to teaching, recruit instructors, equip the facility, and raise funds so that no child who needed the services would be turned away. In the short period of time since the school has been open, parents have seen remarkable changes in their children's lives. Some have learned to speak, others have learned to stop injuring themselves, others have learned basic skills we all take for granted when we wake up in the morning. Like Amelia, the McArdle Center is giving children <clears throat> with autism and their families hope for a brighter future. We thank Amelia for creating a wonderful place for children, a safe place for children diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Her enthusiasm, kindness, and insight are beacons for these children and their families. We applaud <clears throat> the character and compassion with which she lives her life Amelia, will you join me on the stage to receive the volunteer? Um, 
Thank you, Gary, for making me mess up my makeup before I had to get up here. Um, and I would like to say a huge thank you to Chesapeake Charities, not only for this award, but for all of the things that they've done in the community and all of the amazing support that they've provided for the McArdle Center. We could never have gotten where we are without them. Um, I'd also like to thank everybody who's here to show support today. This is easily the most amazing and impressive crowd and humbling crowd that I've ever stood before in my life. Um, every single one of you in this room, almost, has done something to be really instrumental in helping with so many of the different projects that I've been involved in. Um, when I was trying to figure out something meaningful or a meaningful way to say thank you, I thought about a book that I love called Man's Search for Meaning. It's by a man called Viktor Frankl, and he was a psychiatrist during the Holocaust. And Viktor Frankl came up with this idea that what makes people live through horrible things is that their life has a sense of meaning. It has something that is so important that nothing that they go through is meaningful at all. What is the biggest thing that they will always have is their immense meaning in themselves. And I came from a family who had a mission with a huge meaning. And I spent most of my adult life looking for something like that and trying to find that meaning. And I found it one day in a little girl named Riley McCardle and in her sister Caitlin and in their mother Emily McCardle. So while my thank you list is enormous and I could never get to it today, first and foremost, I would like to thank the parents of the McCardle Center and those families who give what I do everyday meaning. Thank you very much. It's tough act to follow. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, thank you, Gary, so much. And thank you, Amelia, and to all of our award winners. It has been quite an afternoon. When we adjourn, I'd like to ask our recipients um, to uh, proceed to the garden room, which is just to my left. And uh, the governor will be there for photographs with our awardees. And also, if the board members and the committee would also proceed there um, before the governor leaves, we'll have a short time to um, take that opportunity. Due to time constraints, we'll be presenting citations of, of, to the award winners um, at the conclusion of the ceremony in the garden room also. Citations have been issued from Senator Ben Cardin, from Congressman Andy Harris, represented here today by Denise Lovelady, Senator Steve Hershey, who was also here, Delegate Steve Ahrens, Jay Jacobs, and Jeff Grist from the Maryland General Assembly, and the Queensland County Commissioners, represented here by Jack Wilson. And we thank you all for your attention to this detail and also for being here today. The orchids, as was mentioned earlier, on the table were donated by Bell Nurseries, Gary Mangum, and also the poinsettias. The orchids on the table uh, for whoever there on the table can claim it and convince the others at the table that they are the worthiest one. <laughs> we talked about should we do it closest to the birthday, closest thing. Larry, when's your birthday? Uh, Say uh, 545. 545. Oh! <laughs> May 25th. 25th, May 25th. Maybe we could do whose birthday is closest to the governor. However you decide at your table, someone at the table, please do take the orchid home. All right? And the point set is we are going to reserve for the board members. So each board member who is here, please take a point setter. You will notice in your program that Elaine Curl, who is our chairman, was supposed to do the closing remarks. I share with you the great concern we have. Elaine Curl is not here today because her mother is gravely ill. And we would ask you to please keep Elaine and her mother in your prayers. 
It is a very, very stressful time for her, and uh, she was not able to attend today. She has been an extremely efficient and effective president of Chesapeake Charities, and we sincerely wish her understanding, peace, and um, our support and prayers go with her. Um, and before we adjourn, I would like to make one final appeal. And as you know, we are a charity, a nonprofit, and what I do is work the phones. And it's going to get to the point where no one is going to take my phone call anymore. <laughs> um, and I understand that. Uh, but anyway, inside your program is a donor card. And if you like what you've seen here today, we would greatly appreciate a contribution of any size to help us continue and to support our work. There's no limit to the good that we can do together. Thank you all very much again for your support, for being here. Congratulations to all of our award winners. Thank you so much, and I hope you continue to enjoy this beautiful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.